Okay, welcome to the December 12th planning board meeting. There are five of the seven meet, uh, members here. Uh, one of them, our chair, not being here, so I'm subbing in as chair tonight. Um, we're starting a little bit late. It is 7.09. Um, the first thing on our agenda is uh, minutes, which we have no minutes. Time. We have no minutes. Sorry, ma'am. So we have to kill 30 seconds, um, and then we, we are going to start the public hearing part of the agenda. So, okay, so I'm going to read the preamble and, um, and then we'll start from there. So, in accordance with the provisions of Section 5 and 11 of Chapter 40A, these public hearings have been duly advertised and notice has been posted and mailed to the Massachusetts Department of Housing and Community Development, the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission, and abutting towns. These hearings are held for the purpose of providing an opportunity for interested citizens to be heard regarding the proposed amendments to the Amar zoning bylaw. These amendments will be on the agenda for the town council at an upcoming meeting. So, 710 zoning bylaw changes mandated by the Amherst Home Rule Charter. To see if the town will vote to amend the zoning bylaw by repealing the zoning bylaw in its entirety and adopting a new zoning bylaw, including amendments recommended by the Bylaw Review Committee to bring the zoning bylaw into conformance with the Amherst Home Rule Charter as adopted March 27, 2018. So first we're going to have our director, Christine Bestrup, speak, and then we have a couple of other um, town hall staff people that are going to speak. So um, after the charter was adopted in March, um, a uh, committee was established, the bylaw review committee, to review the zoning bylaw and the general bylaw of the town of Amherst to bring them into conformance with the charter. And, um, uh, the, the bylaw review, review committee consisted of uh, three members, and Mr. Kravitz, um, who's the economic development director, was their staff person. The three members were Bob Ritchie, who used to be our town council and has also worked for the state in the capacity of an attorney, and he has been generous enough to donate his time to us for this project. Um, there was also um, a Mr. Hargreaves and a Mr. Kubiak. Uh, on the, on the uh, committee. And they spent um, months meeting regularly, looking at both the zoning bylaw and the general bylaw, and they have made recommendations um, which they would like to present to you. And um, the idea here is that you would um, make a recommendation to the town council as to uh, whether you think this is um, worthy of adoption. And um, so you may ask Mr. Kravitz or Mr. Ritchie to give you further explanation. <laughs> Mr. Ritchie is the chair of the committee, so I'll defer to him. Yeah, taking the, uh, uh, the task that we, we assume, most of our time was devoted to the general bylaws, which required a considerable amount of uh, attention. Uh, to, to effect a, a report with recommendations to the council that brought those bylaws into conformity with the child. Uh, the zoning bylaws were a much uh, well-organized, established uh, body of law uh, with a coherent alphanumeric system of uh, order uh, and substantively uh, probably needed to have few changes uh, mainly uh, to identify the obvious replacements of select board with town uh, council in some cases and town uh, manager in others, and perhaps uh, one or two places where it could be either or maybe something else indeed. So we made our report with explanations of how we came to the conclusion about the relatively few zoning bylaw uh, adjustments uh, that would be required for the, the document that you, I think, have in front of you. Uh, if adopted, uh, to serve as the zoning bylaws of the town, uh, adopted whole and entire as the legislative action of our council. 
And uh, we thought that was the best way to interpret the charge uh, to, to us uh, under the Charter. And, uh, and uh, it, it reflects a lot of work done by town staff with respect to the uh, uh, adjustments of renumbering some sections that needed to be attended to. So this was an opportunity uh, to fix a few ministerial uh, augments in the way the design of the bylaw was currently uh, uh, expressed. And so basically that was it. Most of our work, as I said, devoted to the general bylaws. And uh, so the, the process that we're engaged in, uh, as you indicated at the beginning, is to satisfy the statutory standard of Chapter 48, which is the Zoning Act. Uh, chapter 48, Section 5 says that this body has to have a hearing on it, uh, advertised for a couple of weeks. And uh, uh, at that point, the condition on which the council is authorized to legislate will be satisfied. Uh, you don't have to like it or not like it. You just have to report to the council that you had this meeting, uh, the public had an opportunity to, to come and look at it, and then the council is jurisdictionally equipped to act. Yes. May I say one more thing, which is that um, the planning board did receive a transmittal uh, memo from Doug Slaughter, the chair of the select board, transmitting this um, document to the planning board for its for the purpose of holding a public hearing. Good. And just to address the uh, issue of the order of things during the transition, uh, we had one uh, uh, one executive body sending it over to the select board, sent it over, and now you report back to the, the legislative body. That matter is simply subsumed into the way the charter is written. Uh, the Attorney General has consistently interpreted uh, these two events, the planning board hearing and the transmittal to it by the select board of the town or anyone else under the new charter, as irrelevant. As long as the two things were done, it really didn't matter the order in which they were done. So if, if there was any concern about the, uh, the, the way it was transmitted to the planning board, uh, those uh, concerns took place. Would uh, the board like to have Mr. Ritchie and Mr. Kravitz walk through these changes one by one? I, I don't think it's necessary. I have to review the changes that they all seem eminently sensible to me. Uh, the only issue is the uh, maybe the marijuana section, mm -hmm. which uh, is, is complicated, uh, and it would be useful to know what uh, what is going on there that may not meet the eye. I agree with that. Um, if you could step through that one. And the only other one that had any substantive changes was the um, CBA. That where you um, changed the membership writing. Well, that was part of the charter. Yeah, that was the charter. Yeah. Part of that. So charter I just wanted them to say it because everything else is pretty much what you said a cut and paste mm -hmm. of, of new wording for old wording. Um, mm -hmm. So like one sentence just explaining why that one and how that one's covered and then the marijuana which is quite large and it wasn't quite a that case. The individual components of the provisions dealing with marijuana uh, may be confusing but they were confusing in, in their current residence. Uh, the goal was to take them and just move them without making any substantive uh, changes to them. Yeah and I didn't Take that a step further. Um, I believe what happened when these were passed is um, they were all passed and the subsequent definitions were not renumbered. So there was going to need to be a renumbering. Um, also, keeping all the marijuana definitions together seemed like a sensible thing to do. And doing so and just renumbering it would then put the definition is not all in alphabetical order. So um, this was a solution that didn't change any of the definitions. It's literally just putting a header, 12.31 marijuana uses, and then moving all of the definitions related to uh, marijuana uses under that header so that they're both 12.31 is alphabetically correct, and within 12.31, it, it remains alphabetical. And I believe that the 
the planning board would have, if not for the charter transition and the other changes, the planning board probably would have had a public hearing and asked the clerk to um, make non-substantive changes, I think, which would have been allowed. We thought rather than having two public hearings and noticing them both, um, we could just simply do, do it together. So if I'm looking at the full bylaw, when you have, so and then you gave us a memo. So we see the new inserted text from the marijuana. And then if you went to like page 114, even though it doesn't look exactly the same, it's just been shuffled, is it's what you're shuffled. saying. Okay. And there was another um, marijuana related thing, I think it was dimensional table. Yeah, uh, section 33 on the second page of the memo. Um, and it, again, it was just, uh, I think one of the sub items had been deleted, and so. We, need, we just changed the numbers from four to three and from five to four. Um, and that was the only change there to clarify. Does the board, does anyone else have questions they want to ask? Okay. All right, so at this point, we can open it up to the public. If there's any public here, just please state your name and your street address, and you can ask any questions. Are there any questions? No? Okay. So, um, what are we thinking? Well, thank you for all the work that we've done. This oh, time. yes. I tremendous amount of work in the <laughs> orbit. Maybe in the other general bylaw, but I think this is, this seems non-controversial to me. And I would move that we recommend, as a planning board, recommend to the town council to adopt um, these these changes to the uh, zoning bylaw. Second. Okay. And close the public hearing. And close the right there. Thank you. So with that, um, is there any more discussion? Um, okay. So we can have a vote. Um, all in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Very detail oriented. <laughs> So we can move on with our agenda. Um, we move on to old business and A, I believe um, Chris has told me that we don't have any um, sign your decisions. Um, <clears throat> unfortunately, we didn't get the decisions written today. Um, I will have them written tomorrow. The special permit decision needs to be filed by Friday. So I would ask planning board members to either come here to sign a decision or I could drive it to your house to get your signature. And the reason it needs to be signed, uh, it needs to be filed with the town clerk by Friday because it expires on the 16th. That's just a special permit. The site plan review can be taken care of at a future date. That's not so time sensitive. But, um, so how does that mean? I would prepare it tomorrow and drive it to your house. No, if you yeah. sign it, have you come? Tell us um, sometime till between what, tomorrow, Friday. say, what, what if we say 2 o'clock tomorrow, and it has to be at the clerk's office by 4.30 on Friday, so, but I wouldn't want you to wait until right. then. Like, so how about 2 o'clock on Friday? You want me to go that way? all at the same time? time? No, you don't need to take well, Let's do one o'clock on Friday. One o'clock on Friday. So, if I want to, so after so two o'clock tomorrow. So, can we all sign it by one o'clock on Friday? Is that the question? Yes. By one. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'm, I'll probably come Friday morning. I will too. Okay. And I can drive it to wherever you want. I can, so I can bring my daughter home. Be ready by when? I will be ready by two. Sure. Two o'clock tomorrow. Tomorrow, okay. If I ever fail to come tomorrow, then I'll send you an email. It's more likely I'm going to do it Friday morning, just so that I'm going to do Friday morning also. I'm going to put my schedule. Um, are you going to tell the other two members today? Yes, we need one more member to sign. Um, does Mr. Burt Whistle doesn't need to sign? What does not sign? He doesn't. Uh, he didn't there. vote in favor of it. Yeah, you, you were against. You were voted, oh, it's there. What's voted the opposed to it. So, so that's 236 
they're fuzzy, so you don't have to be bothered to sign them. <laughs> Only <laughs> those who voted in favor. So the four of you plus Mr. Stutzman and Ms. Chow. Ms. Chow, yes. And I'm very sorry about that. It's just been no very worries. busy. No worries. We've had people sick and changing jobs. And no yes. worries. No worries. Yeah. Thank you for all the stuff that you do. <laughs> That's right. No problem. We can stop it. All right. Great. Um, any other topics um, not anticipated? No. Um, I'm just going to bring up that Chris did send us an email regarding the um, ENF uh, for the uh, Applied Golf uh, Photovoltaic Power System Project. You should have all gotten that. And nothing else is proceeded with that, no meeting schedule or... You know, we sent um, this letter to, um, to the state, and then they're going to issue a certificate on EMF, environmental notification form. The certificate will tell the applicant if there's any um, questions that need to be answered. Um, it's possible that they may require uh, an environmental impact statement, but I, I don't know about that. I don't know whether they will or not. Um, the Applied Golf is right now upstairs in the Conservation Commission um, meeting, and the people who are interested may wish to go upstairs after this meeting and hear what they have to say. Um, it will probably take more than one evening um, come, and then it will probably come to the Zoning Board of Appeals later in January, probably January 31st. Okay, so now we move on to um, new business. Uh, topics not reasonably anticipated in 48 hours. The only thing I have is scheduling our next meeting. Um, I assume we don't want a meeting on the 19th next week, unless we need one. We don't need to, <laughs> to meet on the 19th. So the next one would be January 2nd. January 2nd. Mm -hmm. But whatever's we prefer not to do the January 2nd. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so make it the 9th. No, could be the 16th. The 16th is the next. So the 16th is the next scheduled meeting. <coughs> That's the meeting that we requested that the um, solar people come and make a presentation to you. Mm -hmm. on the 16th. Yeah. So January. So the next meeting will not be until. It may not be until the 16th. 16th. Okay, unless we hear from you. Yes. Okay. Sounds good. <coughs> and then, the, then there would possibly be a meeting on the 30th if there's a lot of business. Okay. So we move on to are there any form A and R's? No. Okay. Any upcoming ZBA applications? Not that I haven't told you about. I think I've told you about all of them. Any upcoming SPP, SPR, so. Oh, there's one CBA that I have. One CBA, okay. Um, the medical marijuana facility up on Meadow Street, <coughs> um, they are coming in with an application for special permit for recreational marijuana sales. So that will probably be heard on January 31st as well, but there's no word of appeals. Thanks. That's RISE, isn't it? Right. Okay. Yeah. okay. So back to the SPP, SPR. Nothing's mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, So now we move on to item <coughs> eight, which is clinical committee and liaison reports, um, which Chris has told me earlier that obviously the um, council hasn't moved on any of the new appointments and such. So we have what it is, but I'll run through the list. Um, Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. Going to a meeting tomorrow. Um, so we don't have anyone for the Community Preservation Act right now. We don't know anything about that. I don't even know if they're meeting. Mr. Burt was um, nominated, but yeah. they haven't moved they any taken any action yet. Okay. Um, Agricultural Commission, that's vacant. Um, Design Review Board. Uh, we've had no meetings since our last planning board meeting. Okay. Um, Greg's not here. He would report on the Amherst Municipal Affordable Housing Trust. I do know this. Is there a meeting coming up? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It came up last week, actually. I think it was the 6th. Right after your other meeting. Okay. I haven't heard a report. Okay. 
uh, zoning subcommittee. We don't even have a name on here. I don't report on that. Uh, UTAC, uh, yeah, there's nothing to report on either of those. And downtown parking working group, there's a meeting next Wednesday, um, but nothing to report. Um, so the next is report of the chair. I have nothing besides, I hope you all have great, happy holidays. Um, with you and your families and friends. And anything from report of staff? Same from staff. <laughs> Happy holidays. Great, well, happy holidays to you. All right, Adjour <laughs> adjournment, we're good. Wow, this might have been a record. I think so. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, we're all good. Thank you.